everyone. Today we have uh, Hero Ayad, very one of the most favorite faculty members with us today, Prashant. Prashant is not just uh, a tech guy, but then he has his own fan base amongst learners because uh, his because of his engaging ways of teaching. So Prashant, uh, how are you? And would love to hear a little bit from you about your background, where do you come from, what do you do in general? Perfect. Thanks a lot, Sumili. Uh, thanks for your kind words. Uh, so a bit about myself, like uh, I come from a tech background, as you guys already know. So I did my master's in cybersecurity from Eurocom France. Uh, then I kind of worked in the security domain itself. So I was in Singapore working on the Google WebRTC project, working on a project called as the Park. And then after a small stint with the research in the park, which uh, which we say end-to-end -end encryption, um, so we I basically moved back to France and uh, started working with BMW over there on the connected cars. Uh, and after that, uh, it was just before the you know COVID, I came back to India to spend some time with my family, and then we know like you know what happened with the COVID and stuff. But anyway, uh, keeping that aside, it so was kind that, of a, it will be interesting to know how old were you. Oh, okay. Um, so I am 95. That would be 2020. So something around 25, um, so 25 years of old age. So if I'm not wrong, you had your own entrepreneurial avenues as well uh, yeah. before before turning 25 for that matter. Yeah. So when I was actually in um, um, Singapore itself, so I took a vacation to Thailand, uh, one of the most exotic country, um, and to to write a piece of code, uh, and that was like the first startup which I started from Thailand itself. Like I took a one week of vacation, and then I wrote like the entire uh, applications over there, um, and then came back. That was a dating application, you know. But uh, you know, being a sole founder, it didn't quite went well onto the, you know. Uh, on the marketing side, but yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of recovered the money. That's the main, uh, you know, thing. Anyway, so after that, I when I came back to India during the COVID, I saw the huge potential of the education. Like you know, everything was coming online, and I saw like the huge potential of edtech being booming up. Now everyone was like you know already into the edtech, so I decided to do some research because I come from a core research background, having a bit of the AI ML experience, you know, development experience, and um, with the security, you know, a plethora of security experience uh, with me. So I basically, basically decided to create an AI version to detect like the performance of a student, per, you know, in the class. So for example, right now we are in the class and my AI can basically predict and tell you that, hey, will you uh, have you understood the, you know, uh, class or not? Or if there are certain topics which is still not being understood by them. Uh, so that was like more relax, less research. But during this uh, time, you know, most of us were spending most of our time in the house, uh, you know. Uh, so I basically started uh, this another, you know, passion, um, you know, which is basically being given to, uh, you know, passed on with my father and mother who comes from a, you know, education teaching background itself. So my dad is a professor, my mom was a teacher. So we basically, uh, you know, they've passed uh, these teaching kind of thing into, uh, you know, the gene. So I basically started doing some online, uh, you know, teaching. So I got a couple of offers from Upgrad, uh, you know, Scalar, you know, different ed tech platforms out there, Testbook was there, and, um, you know, the Hero Wired uh, eventually. So over the period of time, I was, when I was engaged with a couple of, you know, all these uh, ed tech platforms, I realized, the pinpoint area which everyone is targeting okay and then i saw like the way that we teach in the or like the entire organization uh and uh, how education centric or the student centric we are basically right i mean the hero wired and that basically prompted me to opt for hero wired as a full-time you know faculty uh so, so almost after how, years, how so. how has your uh childhood typically been like i you just said that you know your you come from a family of educators, but yeah. uh, how was, I mean, if I have to imagine young Prashant uh, and his day-to-day -day life in his hometown, how how were those days? Oh, I, okay. Um, so I was, 
I was kind of like the guy who used to study a lot. So when I was in class eight, I completed my class 10th mathematics and physics. So my dad is a, you know, physics professor. So uh, that actually like, you know, uh, and I was always fond of mathematics and, you know, physics in general. So that basically helped me out in, uh, so that was like whole idea. But apart from that, I used to spend a lot of time in playing cricket. Okay, I was I'm still a crazy cricket fan. Okay, I spend a lot of time in cricket. I still like whenever I get time to you know play cricket or watch cricket or you know anything around the cricket itself. So that was the whole more or less the journey uh, that had been uh, for me. More education, more you know studies, and it was not something which where I was pressurized by my parents uh, to study, which you see in uh, a lot of you know child. Yeah. Um, right so but in my case it was more like my passion to you know to unveil some of the mysteries around you know physics some science and you know stuff like that so I was kind of more into uh you know that kind of thing and being an introvert helps <laughs> so Prashant you talked about being a crazy fan of cricket so at any point have you thought of creating maybe an application which is based on cricket or oh, something yes, like I, a predictive application for you know predicting cricket matches and their outcomes yeah so actually um so there are a couple of small things which i did so i i mean a lot of people they don't know but i own a cricket brand as well uh called as dd sports yeah that manufactures the cricket equipment okay it's kind of like you know side hustle um you know mostly for my hobby kind of thing okay i'm not too much into it but you know because i relate myself into it. then i wrote a couple of programs which can i'm not sure how many of you play this dream 11 right where you put your make your teams and you know do stuff like that so i started writing a couple of ai uh, based code uh, which can create the best possible team right so oh, wow. did a lot of mathematics around it uh, made some money not a lot okay but a lot of time like you know obviously uh, you know the ai was not that good i didn't spend that much amount of time so uh, which can be like you know uh, but at least i didn't lose money i think i made overall if i played for like the entire ipl season I made something around uh, 2000 or 2500 bucks and I was just playing on 49 rupees just just to clarify. <laughs> Very uh, nice. I mean that's that's just fabulous utilization of passion as well as uh, you know fondness for any sport. So Prashant, uh, I mean I I'll be curious and I'm sure a lot of youngsters who relate with you would uh, be as well. There are times when you want to do it all and especially becomes uh, every each one of us really hit that uh, roadblock when we are in our early 20s. So did you ever have that kind of a challenge where you wanted to do everything, but you felt like there was not enough time for me to be able to do everything? Yes, yes. So this is, uh, I think like, you know, this is one of the important lessons which I learned, um, you know, through a tough journey. Uh, so I think it was during 2021 when I, I thought of like, you know, creating everything by myself, you know, work on my startup, do everything by myself, you know, be the lawyer, be the marketing, be the SEO specialist, you know, as a, you know, founder, whatever you want to do, you just want to put your hands into everything. Yeah. And then I was supposed to have an investor meet in approximately eight days. I did a rough calculation that, you know, this entire thing will take something around 240 hours. Uh, to do which is like you know not possible because 30 hours a day is just not possible so i did like you know okay i can skip this part i can skip that part you know so i started spending a lot of time in doing everything uh, i think that was the biggest mistake which i made because uh, eight days i didn't sleep i was just on the red bull uh you know uh awake you know not going out of my room and stuff like that and on the, on, on the seventh day i had a heart attack right so that was, uh, and then like, you know, that basically episode basically uh, moved me and, and then at that point I realized that there is, um, you know, you just don't have to do everything by yourself. Okay. Yeah. You can have your helping hand uh, who can help you out in the uh, other stuff. Right. So. And then I decided, okay, I will completely focus on the tech background, which I come from. Okay. Making applications, you know, 
be it, uh, you know, security evaluations or, you know, learning about something. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, you know, a lot of roadblocks, which I feel with a lot of youngsters are that they want to do, even in the tech background, they want to do everything by themselves. Like, you know, develop the application, do the security testing and stuff like that, right? But based upon the, you know, knowledge that they possess, they don't, they're not able to create that good of the application or, you know, some bugs or, you know, a lot of things uh, goes here or maybe your motivation is down. So I feel having a partner in the business is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The second thing, which I always do, if like I, I think from past 10, 11 years, and this is like something I have been doing continuously, where I spend at least one hour for myself. In that right. one hour, I, uh, you know, I study. Okay. Uh, whatever, like, you know, for example, right now I'm doing a research on quantum computing, uh, mostly in the uh, you know, quantum, because I feel like, you know, the coming world is going to be, uh, you know, much more moved by this technology itself. So idea is like, you know, in your free time, maybe you can have, I'm not asking you to have spend like at least one hour, maybe spend 15 minutes. Okay. Just okay. look for a interesting topic, which you are passionate about. Maybe yeah. it can be a literature, maybe it can be, I don't know, it can be any single thing, right? right. But spend at least 15 days. And the most important part is the consistency. Right. So with the consistency, uh, and there is a rule like if you if you do something for straight for twenty one days, it kind of become a, you know slowly uh, become uh, is your habit as well. So you know kind of do it for the twenty one days, fifteen days uh, a day without a break. Okay, be consistent uh, on that particular thing, and I think like you'll get a huge amount of time. Just imagine like you know three sixty five hours. I mean it's a you know simple calculation. It says if you spend two hundred hours in any single topic. Okay, right. you are into a beginner level where you can, you know, do a good, decent job with that. If you spend 500 hours in that particular topic, you are into a good intermediate level that you will be like, you know, mid uh, range kind of manager kind of uh, thing. But if you spend thousand hours in any specific tech stack, uh, and I'm saying like, you know, uh, the uh, thousand actual hours. Okay. Yeah. So if you spend thousand hours, you are in an advanced level of that particular stack or whatever, like, you know, thing that you want. To An do. expert level. And yeah. What you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So if, if, if you, if you just imagine like, you know, in two to three years, if you keep on spending like an hour, okay. In two to three years, you gain a mastery in one particular skill altogether. Yeah. So I did my BTEC from electronics and telecommunication. I never, I don't come from a computer science background. Okay. Right. But still I managed to learn 26 languages uh, by the time I completed my BTEC altogether. Okay. And maintaining my, like, you know, the grade point of eight, which is like a bare minimum. If you, if you, I mean, like uh, in India, it's a bare minimum, uh, which everyone judges on you on that. But uh, yeah, so these are a couple of, you know, uh, things which I have experienced from my life. Uh, and I feel like if anyone can, I mean, this is not a rocket science, I think. Uh, if I can do it, like anyone can, you know, uh, do it. It's just about consistency. So I think Prashant, that was a great chat. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people will draw inspiration from your story. A lot of youngsters will be able to sort of relate with you, given that you who do not come from a hardcore uh, tech background or computer science background, pivoted to, uh, you know, something which is the future of technology, if I have to put it right, and where, wherein your daily experimentations will help you uh, not only find newer things, but also help people explore newer opportunities. So thank you for doing this, Prashant. Uh, we will catch up again for more inspiring stories. Thanks, Lord Somili. Have a nice day.